What's up guys, this is Adam from 3 and welcome to another Maya tutorial and today we're gonna create a depth of field in Arnold and Maya and also we're gonna take it a step further and then we're gonna create a dynamic rig that uh, whenever you move a locator will always adjust the depth of field based on the locator uh, position so this way you don't have to keep typing numbers on for the objects and it's gonna speed up the workflow and it's gonna make it really fun to uh, animate depth of field so without further delay let's get started okay so this is the scene I have uh, it's a pretty basic scene I just have the candles and the vase of the orchids the background and this is the camera so let's go to the camera view this is what we have so far so let's do a quick render okay so it's done rendering and you can see like we have everything now in focus and uh, that's not realistic usually you want uh, something to be out of focus and, s and some uh, important things you want in the scene to be in focus so let's do that and so let's save this image and then let's go back to our scene and uh, to do that let's make sure we select our camera and then to apply the depth of field you don't want to use this depth of field this is the default uh, from Maya since we're rendering with Arnold we want to use the uh, Arnold uh, depth of field you can use this one if you're using uh, another rendering engine other than uh, Arnold but let's go scroll to the Arnold let's scroll down and this is uh, here the settings we can use to adjust the depth of field so first let's enable the depth of field and let's go back to our camera and then the most important parts in the depth of field those two settings here the focus uh, distance and the aperture size those affect how depth of field will be applied to our scene so focus distance is basically how far the depth of field will be focusing on like this depends on the distance of your objects so you need to adjust this focus distance based on uh, how far the objects is from the camera the aperture size will be deciding how much blur gonna be applied for the depth of field so in order to know how far these objects from our camera we can easily tell through going to display and then heads up display and then go to object uh, details so this object details is gonna give you information about each object you select in your scene including the distance from camera so let's select this object for example and you can see immediately it's uh, 44.559 and that's the distance from the camera so let's let's apply this number to our camera so let's go to the camera settings and let's change here to 44.559 click enter and then let's change the aperture size to 1 okay since we have these settings let's go back to our render view and then let's render okay so it's done rendering and you can see it looks pretty good already just by applying a quick depth of field you can see before like how everything in focus and now how we just can focus on the object that we want and uh, for this noise uh, here like the blurry parts if you want to increase the quality of the blur so it doesn't look so noisy you can always adjust that by going to the settings and uh, adjusting the camera AA here you can increase the aliasing and it's just gonna get you a better renders so let's close this one and then let's go back to our scene so this is basically how you apply depth of field in Arnold but I want to show you in this tutorial like a step further let's take this into step further and let's create like a depth of field rig to the camera what I mean by that is basically instead of every time you want to create depth of field you have to select the object and then see where's the distance from the camera and then go back to the depth of field uh, settings and then change this number again and if you want to animate you're just gonna keep you know typing numbers all the time we can do this uh, more efficient way and what we're gonna use is we're gonna create uh, some measurement tool and connect this uh, measurement tool into our camera so basically we're gonna have like a locator we animate the locator around and wherever the locator positioned the depth of field will be applied so let me show you so it'll make more sense so let's go create and then measure tools and then create distance tool so let's click just anywhere to create it Press. and then uh, so this point and this point will always Maya will show you the, the, the distance between them as you can see in these numbers so we want to make sure this point always uh, connected to our camera 
and then the other point we can always animate the locator too we can always animate it around and we need to connect the distance node into our camera focus uh, distance so let's do that so first let's go to this point and then let's uh, go to the top view and let's make sure we line it up with our camera you know like you line it up with the camera lens basically and let's move it up let's make sure from all angles it's looking correctly and let's move this one so let's go back to this side so let's select this object so this object showing is 44 559 and let's select this locator so if we moved it here to match you want to make sure you're looking from the camera view so 44 474 so basically very close you know so that's pretty good so we know now it's working because it's measuring correctly okay so let's select this camera and select this locator and go to the animation they go constraint parent make sure maintain offsets checked on and click add so this way when we move the camera this locator is always following okay now this locator we don't have to constrain it to anything because this one the one we're gonna be moving around and then the camera will be always focusing on it okay now what we need to do uh, let's go to the camera and let's select the camera and we need to have this uh, focus distance always connected to the to the distance uh, dimension we don't wanna uh, as we mentioned you know we don't wanna keep typing number how we do that we can do that multiple ways but the easiest way to do is you go to the connection editor so let's select the distance dimension so this is this is basically here the distance that's uh, that's what we need to be connecting and let's go to windows general editors and then let's go to connection editor and load it to the left that's first step second step let's select the camera and then while we are here in the arrow settings let's click select on this button and then let's load to the right so this way we actually selecting the camera shape node and not the camera transform node okay and then uh, from this distance dimension let's scroll down until we find uh, the node called distance okay so it's not showing so what we need to do let's select it again and then let's click select in here same as what we did with the camera and then let's load okay so now we're selecting the correct dimension shape node before we were selecting the transform node that's why we couldn't get to the settings so click on distance and then the camera shape node let's scroll down until we get to the R node which is gonna be AI so AI focus distance that's the one so you're gonna see there is another one that's called uh, it's another focus distance but that's not the one I just want to show it to you so you know so this focus distance that's not the one we're gonna connect to because that's the wrong uh, uh, attribute we're gonna connect to the Arnold one since that's the one we are using so let's scroll down to AI focus distance and let's click on it so now we connected those two nodes together so let's verify that by going to the camera and you can see here the focus distance already connected to this locator so if I move it all the way back so it's 101 and let's check the camera It's 101 so that's great so that's we know now our uh, our dimension uh, for distance is connected to our focus distance so now let's do some tests so let's uh, move this locator and put it to this vase uh, let me just zoom in just make sure we're selecting the correct settings okay so basically we're pointing at this vase and uh, we already saved this one no let's save it and then let's do a render okay so it's done rendering now and you can see now the focus is on the vase and not on the candle anymore 
So this way is a pretty good way. You, as you can see, guys, we can uh, you can animate basically this locator and put it anywhere in your scene, and it's gonna always the depth of field be adjusting based on this locator. And this way, gonna save you a lot of time and the effort trying just to figure out numbers and typing numbers all the time. So this is a pretty good way of having a full animation in your depth of field. So we can, for example, animate the camera. Let's go to like 120. And then uh, we can start the animation. We can end the animation, let's say, on here, on the vas. I'm, I'm selecting the locator and pressing keyframe. And then we can go at the first frame. And then we can have it pointing into our candle. So let's move it there. Just make sure it's lining up. So we can save that and then let's hold that for like 30, fra 30 frames and then after that we transition to the 120 and maybe we can push that to so transition a little bit faster. So this way at the beginning is focusing on here and then the transition focusing into there. And then when you render, you're going to have full animation with the transition. You can have the transition to go faster or slower. It's up to you. But this is really f like a very fast way of how you can switch a depth of field from one object to another. And it's going to save you a lot of time and energy. So hopefully this tutorial will help you guys. Let me know if you have any questions. And please subscribe for more future videos. And feel free to visit our website 3 dmodelscom for more information, more free tutorials and cool uh, 3D models. Until next time, take care.